Good afternoon or good evening, should I say, and welcome to another segment on Cascade Media. And this one is really exciting because we have an opportunity to speak with our guests who are graduating seniors, one from high school and one from college. So please welcome with me. Um, we have Mr. Andrew Robinson, who is a graduate of Lincoln College Preparatory, and also Mr. Joshua Nelson, who was a graduate of Lincoln University in Jefferson City, Missouri. Uh, good evening, gentlemen, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Okay, so let's thank get you. started. This is gonna be a conversation that's gonna just kind of flow. So we're gonna speak from the heart. I just want people to know who you are, what you're doing and your experiences. And so we'll start off with you each. Uh, telling us a little bit about yourselves. So why don't we start with Andrew? So as you know, I just graduated from uh, Lincoln College Prep. Um, I went to, for middle school, I went to Academy Lafayette. So I have a French immersion background and like a very diverse background um, as I had teachers from all over. And that kind of influenced who I am as a person. Um, I'd say I'm very open uh, culturally, and that's something that I like to delve into. Okay. And Joshua? Yes, ma'am. So, yes, uh, like, like you said, I am a graduate of the Will LU, Lincoln University in Missouri. Uh, I'm on track right now to commission as an officer. So, uh, one of the organizations I was part of in Lincoln University was RTC, uh, Preserves Officers Training Corps through the U.S. Army. And the um, goal of RTC is to have this uh, college graduates commission as an officer. So uh, looking forward to that career. Uh, for me as a person, uh, I'll say I'm an ambivert. So I can be an introvert and an extrovert uh, where I want to be. Uh, very, very hardworking and a very routine person uh, because my family has some family that was in the military. So that's probably describe my routine kind of and that's probably why uh, what led me to uh, being slipped turned just that routine uh, kind of lifestyle. But, you know, I do have fun. College is about have fun. Also, uh, taking business too. So, oh, yes. Okay. Well, thank you for giving your time this evening. There is one thing that both of you left out of your introduction, and that is the honor um, as Andrew serves as the co valedictorian for Lincoln. Um, high school, Lincoln College Preparatory, and then Joshua is salutatorian for Lincoln University. So congratulations on your accomplishments. And thank you so much for being here and sharing words of wisdom with us this evening. Um, let's go into the next phase of the questioning as we have the discussion as we talk about what you believe to be your greatest achievement while in high school. So I think my greatest achievements while in high school, I'm like, I do have the academics, mm -hmm. but I would say that it had to be my relationships that I developed while in high school. Um, I wouldn't have been able to obtain the level of, I would say like academics that I have without my friend group and like the, like those who have helped me. So like my coaches who constantly pushed me, um, my friend group that's really close to me and who was always pushing me to do my best. And then in the parents who provide me guidance um, with school, with emotional guidance, mental guidance, and all of this. And so I think the group that I made around me and my relationships have been my biggest achievement. Perfect. Joshua? And this question would be uh, for college, I'm assuming? Yes. Or, yes. Okay. So yeah. yes, uh, biggest uh, achievement. Well, highest highest or biggest achievement. I would say kind of similar to what uh, uh, wasn't that Austin or Aaron? Andrew. Andrew. Oh, Andrew. Similar to what uh, Andrew said as far as uh, building relationships, so networking uh, in college. Uh, yes, you know, at the very root of it, you uh, go to classes, you uh, gain good, good, good grades, similar to high school. But the intangible aspect is obviously building lifelong friendships because uh, in college, when you, when you go to college, you're still going to have a couple of friends around. But at the college level, that's going to be the last time where you be put in a, a setting where uh, you're surrounded by people that are like minded than you. So I would say networking, not only through peers, but through uh, professors too, building that rapport, 
And it's an old saying, you know, it's not about who you know, what you know, but also who knows you. Right. And which can help you uh, down the line when you want to get that uh, career that you've been dreaming about. It can help you down the line if you want to uh, uh, increase the skill that you want to have. So definitely networking, building rapport, building relationships. Uh, that's what makes college fun and worthwhile. Yeah. Absolutely. Both of you have had the experience of attending uh, high schools and colleges that are known throughout our country. Um, you know that Lincoln College Preparatory is known for its level of academic success and its preparation for young people toward college. And then Lincoln University is known historically for the significance in which it was founded and providing an opportunity for African-Americans to attend. Some very accomplished Af African-Americans have attended. I myself am an alumni of Lincoln University. And so I do support HBCUs. But with that in mind and with your accomplishments, what do you believe best prepared you to make the choice to attend the school that you chose? Or how do you believe those schools have prepared you for the next steps in life? And it doesn't matter. Um, so I, can, I can start. And so the reason why I went to Lincoln College Prep is because of the diversity. And I think it's important to go to a public school and kind of see the different lives and I mean like the different uh places in life that individuals come from um at Lincoln College Prep we have a very diverse group not only in race but also in uh socioeconomic status and so I think having that big group it really opens us up uh opens my mind up and it requires me uh be more aware of what's going on around me and uh I think that helped me in my success because I wasn't so close-minded and I got to see individuals who had Likewise, minds and also different, and they uh, uh, challenged my opinions and my beliefs and made me really strengthen them. Okay. Okay, so what best prepared me for a Lincoln University? Uh, shows Lincoln University uh, from a plethora of different things, from affordability to location to uh, my, my family, uh, knowing a couple people down at Lincoln University. Uh, came down to a HBCU college tour that I went on in high school during my junior year. Lincoln University was the last stop on the destination. Uh, Lincoln, going back to have that vibe HBCU co uh, experience and culture, and it's difficult to find that here in the Midwest. There's only, there's only two HBCUs, and most of them are in the South along the East Coast. Mm -hmm. So I still wanted that uh, HBCU aspect but still wanted somewhere close. So Lincoln University definitely uh, was the right answer and, and, and choosing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you had to speak to your younger self or to our underclassmen, um, Andrew, you sharing your choice of going to Lincoln College Preparatory um, and then Joshua, you sharing your choice of going to Lincoln University and someone that, you know, they may not choose to go to those schools, but what advice would you give them? Because you guys have landed the coveted seats and the highest positions you could be in the educational institutions that you attended. So in preparation for those who are coming behind you, what would you tell them? Yeah, so I, I can answer this question first. So as far as, you know, achieving salutatorian status, then the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, how do you do, how did you uh, do it? Did you like, you study like all day, every day? Was that, was that only like your routine? But but no, you know, it's it comes down to really time management uh, because life is what you make of it. You know, people are willing to put in the work energy and it's going to produce the results. So, you know, just balancing the time, balancing uh, some of those, a party was going to come up later that week. I mean, you still can have fun. I'm not saying you need to be a bookworm. If you need to be a bookworm or a hermit, then you, you can do that by all means. But if you know how to balance your time, then it's going to produce just so. Like for me, I was able to balance my time. Not only I was in uh, RTC, I was uh, president of an organization. I was doing uh, community and civic things. I'm sure Angie was doing a lot of uh, I was in a lot of organizations as well, but it's all comes down to a time, time management. Okay. Good answer. Good answer. Uh, Andrew? 
I would say to surround yourself by individuals who are also very motivated. Uh, I think they, they help you when you're, when you're not able to motivate yourself. And that's a very good thing to have. Um, another one is just is to really take hold of all of the resources that your school offers. Um, it's, it's a good thing. Like they offer them. Sometimes the schools don't always explicitly like, hey, we have this, but go and search for them. Ask teachers, ask them, what can I do in order to help myself? And if you have that goal that you want to reach, uh, the people at your school, either they'll know the answer how to get you there or they can uh, put you into contact. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that going off of what Joshua said is learn when to work and when to play. It's, uh, it's, a re it's really a good balance to have the two of them. You can't always just work and you can't always just play. You have to know when the good time is to do e uh, each of them. Great advice. Great advice from both of you. Let's talk about who was the most influential person for you and why. Um, I can start off. So the most influential person for me is like, so I have a neighbor and he acts as my older brother. Uh, he's the most influential to me because I'm always looking at his back, but I get to see all of the things he did first um, and see the mistakes that he did and learn from them. Mm -hmm. I think having an older brother figure is, uh, has been very important in my life. That's great. You were blessed to have someone that you could look to as an older brother figure. Yeah, so for me, I can't really pinpoint one, one single person to take, take the credit. Uh, I would say it's more, more of a village of people. So uh, it was my family. It was uh, the relationships I made with my professors and obviously friends. You know, each of them played a little part in my success towards uh, achieving that uh, high accolade, or whether that was coaching or motivating me, whether that was uh, – becoming a study partner. Uh, so each of them took the time out of their day to help me uh, to get where I'm at today. I'm very grateful and proud that they did that. Okay. Both of you experienced the pandemic like everyone throughout the country uh, in different ways and we had to handle it in different ways. But for you personally, um, what was the difference in your last year of high school and maybe a year and a half of your um, education that you had to make some changes? How did you handle the situations and what advice would you give to young people knowing that we're going into a new school year? There's a possibility. I understand that there will be um, opportunities for hybrid and in-person instruction still as we go into the new year, just as a cautionary method. Um, but what advice would you give to young people and how to balance during this time? Uh, do you want me to start, Joshua? Uh, you, you can start. It doesn't matter. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So I would say to really look for the good and kind of like what the situation that you're in. Uh, maybe school is difficult and like you can't always have like make the most focus in school. I, I agree that it's hard, even as the valedictorian, there are times where it's, I suffer, like I struggle to do so. But, um, but then there are other ways where I can improve myself or improve those around me um, and really look for those opportunities. Uh, during COVID, we, were, we weren't at school. And so I had a lot more time. I was able to use that to learn other topics that don't necessarily get taught in school and then also help my community. Um, I, think, I think that's really a good one. It's like, what can you do in order to improve yourself and improve those around you? And as a high schooler, you're really trying to get into college and put your best foot forward. And so when, what can you do with this situation with the extra time or whatever struggle you have to improve yourself? And for me, it was how, uh, helping my community by doing free lawn care service. Look for those things in what you're doing and really take a hold of them. Thank you. Joshua? Yeah, so uh, Andrew's right. Uh, definitely uh, finding something positive to help ease the stress and during the pandemic because not everybody can learn virtually. Uh, like like for myself, I'm more of an in-person uh, learner. However, uh, it, didn't, it didn't stop me from learning. Uh, going back to what you said, you know, I was able to do positive recreational things just to ease, ease the stress. For, for me, in the military, there's this uh, term they call uh, 
the most dangerous course of action. So what that mean is uh, kind of similar to backwards plan, but you kind of think about the worst thing that will happen. So the worst thing will probably be happening is obviously uh, you're not having your body, you don't have, to have access to a computer or any uh, type of internet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to sit here and then wait for, you know, something to happen. No, I'm going to maybe uh, ask a friend, can I go to over his house, maybe mm -hmm. go somewhere where they have uh, free Wi-Fi. Uh, because once the pandemic happened, it didn't wait for us. It just happened. Mm -hmm. So your job is just to adjust on the fly or uh, you're going to adjust you're gonna to have to be forced to adjust by wherever that is. So pandemic happened last year, uh, right in March. I was in a whole nother country. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's talking about really adjusting. Yeah. So uh, and when I got back, I definitely had to uh, adjust pretty quick. But I also thought about, you know, if I prepare for the most dangerous course of action with the worst scenario, then it's gonna be easier on the on the way. Because as I say, if another pandemic now is just uh, now let's go back to what I did, you know, during the pandemic, and then be a lot easier, which reduce a lot of stress, which is going to reduce a lot of anxiety, and then you know you're going to achieve those uh, goals that you want to that you want to achieve. Yeah, I would just say that know that the only constant thing is change, and be really proactive about accepting that. Right, right, absolutely, absolutely. Because as long as we live, things are going to change, right? We have to be ready to adapt, you know, and make the best of it. Um, both of you are on pathways to the next step in chapters of, of your lives. Uh, Andrew, you will be leaving to go off to college. And then Joshua, you have just finished college and will begin your life, your career, and the pathway that you've chosen. Can you share with us uh, what your next steps are going to be and why you chose to go in that direction? Yeah, so I'm going to Wayne State University. Um, I'm going to major in bio on a pre-med track. Uh, the reason why I'm going to Wayne State University is they offered me a really big scholarship. So I have um, undergrad paid for and they're giving me medical school tuition with automatic admission. And so I'm doing an eight-year program. Um, the school is also very great. They're very focused on... Um, like helping with uh, healthcare disparities. And that's something I'm very, um, like I'm proud to do. And I'm uh, looking forward to that. Okay. Congratulations. Yes. yes. Oh yeah, thank you. Congrats, man. That's how you got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as for me, uh, like I said, you know, I'll be commissioned as an officer. Uh, as of right now, I uh, don't know uh, what my uh, branch would be, so branch in regards to MOS or, or job. Uh, however, I, I pick, uh, have the op had the option to pick the top branches, so that was in finance, uh, AG, which is uh, kind of human resource, quartermasters, logistics, uh, and things of that nature, uh, due to my uh, undergraduate degree in business. And I said to myself, you know, once I retire and move to the civilian sector, I, I want to be in a field where I still had some uh, civilian skills, mm -hmm. you know, because obviously I'm not going to be in combat. Obviously, I know I'm going to serve that world and wish I'm ready to do. But OK, so once you retire, what's next? So I, I'm thinking more on uh, that plane in order to put me in a better spot for my career. Great, great, great. Well, congratulations to both of you. You've made excellent choices, have nothing but best wishes for you as you go forth. Um, hopefully the informa you, information that you've shared today will encourage someone who will listen to um, this particular production from Cascade Media and be able to feel like they too can see themselves walking in your footsteps because you are leading the way and you are paving the way for those who are coming behind you. You have stood on other shoulders and there will be others who will stand on yours. So just remember as you go forth, always remember to take someone along with you, make the way for someone else to be able to walk the path of their choice. Um, I'd like to ask before we close, is there anyone that you would like to thank for your assistance or your, for their assistance or for their help on your journey? 
there's just not any one person I can just thank. It, it's there's too many <laughs> oh, individuals yeah. for my entire. Don't life. name people. You get in trouble when you start naming. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But definitely family, friends, and staff, mm-hmm. and just community. It's definitely a community effort. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, uh, similar to what Andrew said, like the old saying, you know. It takes a village to raise a child, and it, 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 it surely does. So, you know, it, 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 even your own little siblings, that's still motivation. Yeah, they may not, may not be, you know, uh, old wise counselors or things like maybe your parents, but even uh, children, uh, that's motivation for you. Uh, that's definitely my lower and savior. Uh, I definitely play it in work because I would be here without God, and uh, I thank God every day. So yes, uh, as far as one person, uh, everybody had to think well in the very specific parts throughout my college career, but hey, everybody contributed, everybody supported me. And uh, that's that what led me to you know, achieving just a high accolade. Yes, well, thank you both again for being here this evening. Um, I cannot express how excited I am for you, for what you've done and what I know you will do. I'll continue to try to keep track of you. And please don't forgive me as you're going along your journey. We have work to do. And the work starts with young people like you who are inspired to do the best and to give back to their community. So again, I say thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing the word. Thank you for giving words of inspiration to uh, not only young people, but all of us who are out there who are still learning. Uh, we appreciate our youth and it's, it's youth who are able to see someone who are, who's making the decisions that's going to help us turn this thing around. So congratulations again. Uh, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your patience. And please know if there's anything that I can ever help as a resource, please remember to reach out and I'll make sure that if I don't know the answer, that I get the answer for you. With that, I say thank you for your time. God bless you. And I appreciate you again being here. Thank you. Thank you. Program is brought to you by the Kansas City Business Association. 